Yes, he is, and I get it. But I, I, how do you say no to those fifteen to one odds? Uh, it would be tough. You know, they're, they're in your favor. If I anything mean, right happens, now, you win. Right now, if you say, "Okay, here's the deal at Grove. We're going to put the seventy-four car on the pole. We're going to run thirty-five. We're going to run fifty laps. There's sixteen cars in the field. Corey, you can have all fifteen. I'm taking the seventy-four. I'm not taking that bet right now. There's no way. <laughs> I would. I would, especially at Cottage Grove. With this dude on the pole at Cottage Grove, are you crazy? If I if if he was on the pole, and you. We did that bet again. Heck, yeah, I'd take that bet because I know what he's capable That's of. That's what I'm saying. You're not going to bet against the 74. Yeah. I wouldn't do it. So here's a question for you, Andrew. In your series, in your class, in your car, any time frame, doesn't matter, who would you actually enjoy racing against? The most. The most. Uh, well, I'd have to say Kyle Yak. Really? For the okay. reason that uh, for the past couple of years, he's kind of held the title of, uh, of you know, being the fastest street stock around. He's and won the big shows. That's right. Mm-hmm. He has won a lot of the big shows the last few years, whether it's the Jim's Thriftway 100, the Wall Banger three years in a row in three different cars. He's won the Iron Giant once. Um, I, I can see it. I see a, a, that level of competition that you like. He was talking about it earlier. He he would rather finish second by an inch than win by a mile in a close. I, I get that. And, and Kyle is definitely one of those guys, a very talented driver that understands race cars, understands setup, knows how to make those cars work. It's fun to watch you guys battle it out. Yeah, and it's, you know, one of the things that, you know, even even got me faster as a driver was driving against my brother because he, he really pushed me and, you know, having, you know, being pushed like that is huge to getting better. And, you know, it's hard to, it, it'd be really hard to beat Kyle Yak, uh, you know, without racing against him. So, it, you know, you, you got, it gives you something to strive for. Sure. Absolutely. I can see that. And that's a, gr- that's a great answer. Really. Yeah, it really is. What is your number one goal for this season? Uh, I want to win races. Iron Giant uh, Championship. Uh, that's I would like to win the Iron Giant Championship. Can you We're win it if you don't run the Roseburg race? Now you got a throwaway. Yeah, they're given a grace race, and um, so I, I think that we would still have a, a pretty strong chance of winning. Um, and, and that you know, it's really hard to say because there there's too many good cars to, to even name. You know, in between that's a fact. You know, we, we got you know two or three Cronks out. We have. Uh, Oh, well, Chris Sine's sitting out this year. But, but you got you. Got Brad Gentry. Brad yeah. Gentry, as an assistant. Roberts. That. Yep. Uh, Kevin you know. Roberts. You've got uh, some of the young ladies coming up. I oh, mean, yeah, yeah. Mackenzie Lockhart. She's very, very competitive. In fact, she finished, was it sixth or seventh of the Iron Giant mm-hmm. this year? Mm-hmm. Um, Dakota Goddard, another young guy coming up that's very, very competitive. I think we'll see him uh, step his game up this year with his with his Monte Carlo. Uh, th- there's, a, there's a great field of street stocks and like i said everywhere you go doesn't matter what track so and that's the one thing everybody hears me talk about it i love the late models they're big they're nasty they're fast they're loud they're they're cool looking but as a race fan let's take away in the announcer part as a race fan paying my money to sit in the stands and watch races there is not a better bang for your buck than the street stocks well, and I, I can attest to it because every time we we're uh, mounting cameras up and talking about it, you're either a street stock or a late model, and I want to punch you every time you say <laughs> late so, model. He gets so mad at me because what happens when we put cameras on late models? They get, get busticated. Every <laughs> one of them gets broken. It, it's true. It is absolutely true. And I, I'll tell you one thing you can expect in 2018 on the 74 car. Moxie Media cameras. <laughs> They're coming. Get ready. Awesome. Bring them <laughs> See, on, man. Yeah, I love it. I love that answer. We get a lot of good footage off that 74 car. So um, let's talk about some of the sponsors helping you out. I know we mentioned a couple during the, the, the interview. Let's talk about some of the guys helping you out here in 2018. Uh, well, um, CAD, again, is, is a sponsor, an A1 radiator. Uh, you know, we've, over the years, we've punctured our fair share of radiators, and, and they're always right there, you know, backing us up with another one, and that's incredibly helpful. Uh, we have uh, we have Lane County Glass, who has been a longtime sponsor. They sp- they sponsored my dad back in the day, and they're still put- they're still helping out now. Wow, that's uh, good. Sierra Gear and Axle is always a good sponsor to have. Uh, you're running different tracks and need different gear sets and stuff like that. It you know that's 
it, they're good to have on your side. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's going to be an awesome year for the Street Sox. I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating a great year for the for the 74 of, of Andrew Langan, who we have here at the Moxie table at the Northwest Race Car Show. We want to wish you the best of luck in 2018, Andrew. I know that uh, you've set your standards pretty high, and you've had a lot of guys that are raising the bar because of you and what your team is doing, and I think that uh, you're going to be that guy that they're going to be chasing a lot this year. But You've watched the build. i got to ask you, because I'm with you here. I'm a Chevy guy. We've watched the build coming through Facebook. What do you think about this car that Justin Evans is building? Uh, well, I, I'm 100% sure that it won't be any slower than that Cougar that he had. <laughs> that Cougar, uh, when you look at it, was so far from being anything special. I mean, it really wasn't. Oh. <laughs> everybody thought that car had something great. It's just an average race car. This car is going to be more on what you guys are doing over there in the 74 pit. It's going to be, I mean, yeah, it might be a street stock, but that's a real race car. Yeah, and I mean, Justin Evans is one heck of a driver. I can't count the number of laps that I've ran with him within three inches of touching and, you know, maybe a little bit of rubbing, and it, it's always a great time to be on the track with him. You know he's going to race you clean. He's fast. He drives hard. And this new car, from all the photos I've seen, is also a piece of art, and it's no doubt going to be fast. Well, every time they post a picture, I look at it, and I'm going... That's kind of what that 74 car does. I mean, those guys do it a lot like that. Everything is done to perfection. It's done right. You can tell everything is measured. It's going to be interesting to see what he can do because, again, they're Ford guys, and that is a – actually, it's a Mercury Zephyr that they're building. That's an actual Mercury Zephyr, but they've done it uh, a lot like what you've done with, with the car and the setup and the adjustments in the front end and the rear end. It's going to be interesting to see how this class changes over the next couple of years. And a lot of that goes back to what you guys have done with your car. Uh, well, yeah. You know, I mean, the class has just been kind of, it's been slowly changing, and we're, you know, trying to keep up as best as we can. And, you know, it's always good to uh, to set a trend than, than to be behind it. Well, so. and, and you guys are definitely trendsetters. There's no doubt. I mean, nobody here is going to argue with that. One thing that, that I, when I look at the street socks, it kind of cracks me up is how high these cars are sitting now. Remember this, that when they were called... J cars, where, which was in the old days stood for jalopy. Mm-hmm. Then they went to what were called classics or whatever you want to call them at your track. They sat really low. You remember that? They sat oh, yeah. really low and the guys would slide them into the corners. Now the cars are sitting higher and they're rolling over on the right front and they're getting up on the bars and it's totally changed just in the last I'd say the last five years. The attitudes in the cars in that division have just, I mean, they're nothing like they were five years ago. No, they, they've really come a long way. There's been a lot of research and development going into these cars, you know, as of late, and it definitely shows on the track. And, uh, you know, it, I mean, they're just a kick to drive to. I mean, just unbelievably fun. You know, when, when the right front just sticks and you know that you're going to stick in the corner and you can just get right back on the throttle, there's not a feeling that's, that's close to that. Yeah, I bet. I bet. And I'll tell you right now, guys, if I was going to go out and build myself a race car to go racing, I would build a street stock. I'll tell you right now, if I was going to go build a street stock right now, I'd try and talk Andrew out of it. Well, i just pay these guys to build I, it for me. I, I, w- I would just <laughs> try and trade him a 74 for that 74 Monte Carlo with a modified because, mm-hmm. honestly, I want to see, you know, I hope in the next within the next five years, Andrew, we get to see you step up into a modified because with your talent level you've displayed in that Monte Carlo, I have no doubt in my mind that you're going to be a contender when you move up a class if you ever decide to. Yeah, I sure would like to drive a modified. There's no doubt about that. They're... They look like an absolute blast to drive. And, uh, you know, it, I, I can't say when, but I, I certainly would like to, to move into one. Well, for those guys out there listening that own a modified, you're looking for a driver, Andrew Langan just said he'd like to get into one. Put him behind the cockpit, you know, put him behind the cockpit and see what happens, and you never know. You might find your, your next diamond in the rough, right, your next superstar. It could happen. It really could. All, all courtesy okay. of the Mod- Northwest Race that's Car right. Show. That's right. See? Yeah. It, it, you never know. We could have changed your future. I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, yeah. he's kind of got his own control. Right, I know, right? <laughs> you know. One last question for you, Andrew, before I know you're getting hungry and you're getting antsy here. What do you think about this show in general, and are you coming back next year? I would love to come back next year. This is a very cool thing, uh, you know, not only for for the whole Shriners deal and what you're putting on, which is super cool, Uh couldn't possibly support that enough. I mean, that that's just a great thing. It shows how big your guys' hearts are. And uh, and aside from that, the race cars here are very cool. Joey Tanner's late model here 
It's one of the nicest cars I've ever seen. This <laughs> Longhorn Modified. It, these things are beautiful. They really are some beautiful race cars here. It's been uh, one of our better. The show gets bigger and better every year, and I'm glad you guys supported it this year and, and showed up, and you brought a lot of fans in today. I actually had to call Andrew earlier today. We had a little kid that was hanging around his car, and they were checking it out, him and his grandmother. And I called Andrew. I said, hey, are you at the show? And he says, I'm on my way. I said, you've got a little kid here that really wants to meet you and get your, get his picture with you. And they couldn't stick around, unfortunately. But, um, boy, he was just drooling. Of all these cars here, that kid was about six years old, just drooling all over yours. I mean, and that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. But, yeah. So, uh, Andrew, I want to wish you all the best in 2018 again. But um, thanks for taking your time to be on the Northwest – Northwest Race Car Show uh, driver live segment here on Moxie Media and Promotions. We uh, we appreciate you, and we'll be looking for you at uh, at the tracks here in the Northwest. All right. Well, thanks for having me, and uh, you know, thanks for putting this on. Absolutely, and you'll be seeing a lot of Sam this year. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going to step on out again from the Northwest Race Car Show here in the Heritage Mall in Albany, Oregon. Just got finished talking with uh, Andrew Langan. Went on our driver live segment. We're going to be back probably here in a couple hours. I'm going to guess we've got one more. We'll do one more interview before the 9 o'clock hour, and we'll uh, we'll be right back here from the Northwest Race Car Show on Spricker Radio, Moxie Media Promotions. I'm Corey Pinfold with widescreen Joel Memora and Sam Pettit. We'll be right back. Northwest, Northwest Dirt, Dirt News is a production of Moxie, Moxie Media Promotions. Promotions. You, you can contact, contact us anytime at www.dirtnews.com.